we had discussed about the osmotic pressure and we had seen that the osmotic pressure is the excess pressure that you apply on one side of the solution so that the process of osmosis completely stops right so so we start from there so osmotic pressure is is the the excess pressure the excess pressure applied on on one side of the semi hmm excess no yes the excess pressure that you apply on one side of the semi permeable membrane to completely stop the I'll explain. To completely stop the movement of the solvent particles. Semi-permeable membrane. Semi membrane. Yeah. Membrane. To totally. stop the movement of the solvent particles is called osmotic pressure osmotic pressure correct so so it is this we had seen this is the water this this has got say solute particles okay and and these are the the green dots are the solvent particles quite in excess right here i have got say see it may be all all pure or it could also be more dilute than this so this could also have some of the solute particles it is not essential that this does not have any solute particles but but less than this and we had seen that the movement will be of the solvent particles of the green of the green particles will be from the right to the left now what what we are trying to say this excess pressure excess pressure here why are we saying excess excess is above what is already existing that is the atmospheric pressure that is already there right above that whatever you apply in this container that becomes your osmotic pressure you understand that hmm excess is not above what is required right excess is above what is existing here on the left hand side right so that is that is what we call the osmotic pressure okay <coughs> now now we we already know uh, and we have been studying it under the under the heading of the colligative property so osmotic pressure is is a colligative property and what do we mean by that what do we mean by that it is a colligative property so it depends on the number of the molecules and never on their nature that is this property depends on the number of molecules and never and not on their 
nature or identity okay what kind of particles they are hmm? and not on their nature or identity okay for dilute solutions for for dilute solutions it has been found that for dilute solutions it has been seen that seen that the osmotic pressure the osmotic pressure and we choose a, a Greek symbol capital Pi okay this is Pi Fine. Yeah, it becomes different for concentration. See, what, whatever uh, <coughs> colligative properties we have been doing, we have been always writing it is a dilute solution. Keep that in mind, always, right? So, so if it becomes, say, kind of saturated, things will change. Osmotic pressure pi depends on the is directly proportional to is directly proportional to to the molarity 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 of the solution molarity of the solution to the molarity of the solution and we denote it by C capital C okay why not capital F <coughs> hmm? why not capital F they might be meaning concentration or something here they denote it by capital C okay at a given temperature okay so solution c at a given temperature t so it is also dependent on temperature and directly okay so it is it is also proportional to It is also proportional to the temperature T. So it goes up with temperature. Okay. Try to try to think about the temperature part. What happens? The moment you raise the temperature, the kinetic energy of the particles they go up. Okay. So the tendency of this to diffuse to this side, it has a natural tendency and you increase the velocity. So kind of the force with which it tries to go becomes more. So that seems logical, right? This happens in air as well. If it is warm air, the, the perfume will percolate faster. It happens, okay? So it is proportional to the temperature T. So, so what are we trying to say? We are trying to say that pi is directly proportional to C. We are also saying that pi is directly proportional to T. It implies that pi is directly proportional to C T. Okay. Now, what does that mean? It implies that pi is equal to to R C T. Okay. R into C into T. Fine. And what is R? R is the gas, gas constant. R somehow is gas constant.
okay gas constant now what is c c is the molarity and what is molarity that we already know fine that is number of moles per per liter of a solution right so so molarity c is equal to the number of moles okay the number of moles divided by the number of moles and we have been using n2 for the the subscript 2 for the solutes and 1 for solvent um okay so the abundant one is given the name first so that is one okay so that is n2 upon v okay so it is n2 upon v so it is n2 upon v okay and what is n2 what is n2 hmm n2 is equal to w2 upon m2 where w2 is what so there are so many nomenclatures right so n2 is number of moles of solute right v is volume of solution in liters in liters right volume of solution in liters w2 is mass of solute in grams correct and and m2 is molecular mass or molar mass of the solute right fine and then we can keep on doing our own rearrangements right so so i i, I write it from from here i i come here so pi becomes what my pi becomes n2 n2 is w2 upon m2 yes uh w2 upon m2 actually actually you see uh, it's kind of that pv is equal to nrt kind of thing is coming right but uh, somehow that volume thing does not come into play because it is the gases whose pressure uh, they are compressible right they are more compressible so there the volume also comes into play here you will not be able to compress it so volume is term is missing the liquids and solids they are they are highly incompressible the liquid is slightly more compressible than a solid but 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 for all practical purposes we say that it is not so while in gases what happens you you compress it you compress it and it increases the pressure so 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 that volume term is somehow gone from here right so w2 upon m2 into 1 by v is equal uh, into that is c into r into t correct that is crt fine now if if someone asks me to find out the if if i know that osmotic pressure then i can very well find out the molecular mass and osmotic pressure is is readily uh, known by experiment you uh, you keep on applying pressure and you see that there is no no net movement and how do you know that there is no net movement hmm how do you know that that you will come to know by sampling this by taking samples from here and finding out that that its concentration is is still the same as what you had initially put fine if you apply more pressure suppose you have, you have applied a pressure and you have left it for say some time say say half an hour and after that you see the concentration going up the concentration going up here it means what has happened you have applied you have applied a you have applied a pressure that is fine higher or lower 
than osmotic hmm? higher because it means the solvent molecules are getting squeezed out and the concentration is going up so you just slightly reduce it and if for for some substantial amount of time you find that the concentration remains the same it means you have reached the the osmotic pressure so m2 so m2 is equal to m2 is equal to w2 into r t upon pi v okay okay so so from here you can calculate the osmotic pressure from the above and from here the molecular mass this is the molecular mass calculation and this is obviously the osmotic pressure Fine. Okay. 